Hello, and welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. In today's session, I'm going to walk through a short notebook uh, that is the subject of an article that's just been published in the May-June edition of the CAS Actuarial Review newsletter. Uh, this is an example where you're a risk manager for a small captive company. Uh, you write a $10 million occurrence limit and you're trying to manage your net exposure down to a PML of three and a half million uh, through a combination of per occurrence and aggregate reinsurance. Um, we're just going to look at the exposure side. We're not actually going to consider the cost of the reinsurance. We're just trying to model out what a net distribution may look like. And we're going to use the aggregate package for that. Now, in order to get started, you need to uh, in install the package. It doesn't come as part of the Colab uh, basic installation here. Um, so this uh, first cell uh, just does that. Um, the import will fail and it will use pip to install aggregate. And you can see that's uh, whirring away here. It takes a couple of minutes, but once you've done that, you don't need to do it again. Uh, we're going to model out um, the commercial order of severity using a mixed exponential distribution. Uh, these are some parameters I found in an old CAS uh, publication. Um, so they're broadly realistic. Uh, means of, of 2,700, 24,000, 275,000, 1.9 million, and 10 million with different probabilities. Uh, the article was from 2008, so I'm just going to trend those forward uh, to 2024. Obviously, you would uh, use a more realistic severity curve if you were doing this in in uh, for real. So uh, to use aggregate, we need to import the build object. That really gives you access to all the functionality. And then QD is just a quick display function that uh, handles some diagnostics and whatnot. Um, so we're going to start off by building the gross portfolio. And we're going to use this uh, DECL language, DEC page to distribution language that uh, I've created here. Uh, we start off by giving it um, the keyword ag for uh, building an aggregate distribution. We give it some sort of label. Uh, this is just a text string to identify it. And then the next three or uh, four phrases here are going to tell us what the exposure is. Um, our ground up estimate for the 10 million limit is there's a $5 million uh, expected loss annually. I happen to know that the severity limited to 10,000 from that curve is 38,236. So I'm expecting to get 5 million over 38,236 individual claims. I'm going to apply my 10 million X of zero uh, policy limit. And then my severity curve is going to be a mixture of exponentials. And I specify that by using the SEV keyword. I give it the means times the exponential distribution with a mean of one, and then I give it the weight. So this will expand out into a mixed exponential severity distribution. And then I'm going to assume a mixed gamma or a negative binomial uh, frequency distribution and uh, with a, a CV on the mixing distribution of 0.2. So that sort of allows for some systematic uncertainty uh, across the claims. So if we run that, um, uh, it automatically updates this and it uses the first Fourier transform uh, method to come up with a discretized approximation to that aggregate distribution. Uh, we run QD gross on that and it will produce this little summary here showing the frequency, the severity and the aggregate, the expected loss uh, computed analytically. So there's the 5 million we asked for, the severity 38 to 36. The claim count is at uh, 130.77 claims expected. The second column, est, E of X, is what it's actually computed from its numerical approximation. And then the third column here is the errors. So you can see it's very, very close. It's within you know, one part in 10,000 uh, in terms of the errors. Uh, the CV of the aggregate is about 68%, which is a, a pretty skewed uh, CV. Uh, and the estimated CV is coming out to, to, to correct that to four decimal places. Um, if we wanted to look at some columns of the uh, actual discretized distribution, um, we can do that. So the gross object has a density DF data frame that captures the um, in number of the uh, computed probabilities, survival function, distribution function, so forth, limited expected values. So we can just do an extract of that. The P total is the distribution of the aggregate. The P sev is the distribution of, of the severity. And you see that little mass here at uh, 10, or 10 million corresponding to the policy limit. Next, we want to apply some reinsurance to that. We want to apply some uh, occurrence reinsurance. So um, 
the way we're going to do that is after we've specified the severity curve here, we're going to um, uh, add an occurrence clause, reinsurance clause. And what we're interested in is the net of uh, this reinsurance that comes uh, after we've, we've applied it. We're going to have, imagine that this is going to be bought in four layers. Uh, there's a 250x250 layer that will co-participate in 50%. Uh, we'll take a 10% uh, share of the 500x500, so it's going to be net of a 90% placement. Um, we're going to then have a 95% placement of the 4 million x a million and 100% placement of the uh, 5 million x 5 million. So if we run that, now you see um, the, the S to E of X column now is the net. Uh, the E of X column is the, the gross. Um, I should have mentioned up here as well, when you do the, the, um, the QD, uh, at the end, it does some validation tests, and this is coming out as not unreasonable because everything's matching. Uh, we're matching the first three moments very closely, so not unreasonable is the best validation uh, you can get. It's sort of like a null hypothesis. It doesn't tell you it's right. It just tells you that it's not wrong, not obviously wrong. Um, when we go to the net here, um, we don't get validation because we've got reinsurance, but we've started from a model that we know works uh, on the growth side, so we can be pretty confident it's going to work on the net side as well. Um, what we see as a result of buying all this reinsurance is that the severity has dropped from 38,200 to 23,600, and our aggregate expected loss has dropped from 5 million down to 3.1 uh, million, and our CV has dropped from 68% down to 31%. So it's had the sort of desired effect on the uh, aggregate distribution. The, uh, and this object we called the net occurrence, net of occurrence object. Um, we have then within aggregate uh, a bunch of usual statistical uh, functions. So we have a CDF uh, on the gross and on the net. We have a quantile or value at risk functions. So you can see the probability uh, that the loss is uh, less than or equal to three and a half million is 41% uh, on the gross. It's 69% on the net. Um, the gross one in a hundred is. Uh, 16 million there and the net one in 100 is about 5.6 million um we would are trying to manage this down to a three and a half million um one in 100 so our next option is to apply some aggregate reinsurance uh the aggregate reinsurance clause comes after the occurrence clause after the frequency specification here because you need to know frequency um we want to buy this down basically to three and a half million so we'll apply um from the net of occurrence 99th percentile will buy up to that limit um, attaching at three and a half million. So this is going to be the limit. It's going to be the difference between the one and a hundred and three and a half million X of three and a half million. Okay, so we can build that. We'll call that object the net uh, aggregate. And then you see here, we do the validation. Now we've lowered our loss here down to 2.8 million. We've lowered our CV from 30 odd percent down to 22%. So continuing reduction in the uh, volatility. And in terms of the PMLs, our 99th uh, percentile PML has indeed been brought down here to three and a half million. Um, we can now play all sorts of games with this. You've got the full underlying distributions available to you um, in, the, in the relevant data frame. So we can do some plotting, for example. On the left hand side here, we've got the uh, density functions. Um, the blue line here is the gross. Uh, there's a little bit of a bimodal effect caused by the overall policy limit at 10 million. So this sort of is corresponding to one $10 million claim plus uh, then some other claims. The orange is the net of occurrence uh, distribution, much, much thinner tail because we've essentially capped the severity at 250 plus the co-participations. And then we've got our net here with uh, about a three and a half million dollar um, uh, attachment point to so a big probability mass coming in that three and a half million and really cutting the tail uh, down to, to a very small point. And then you can see the corresponding things. The survival function is just the probability that the loss is greater than or equal some point. And again, here you see the impact of the aggregate reinsurance. So I hope this uh, short example helps you. you know, uh, I'll put a link to this uh, in the actuarial review uh, article and a link to this workbook uh, below. Uh, helps, uh, this helps you see uh, how uh, you can potentially use uh, the aggregate um, package um, to uh, work out uh, questions regarding reinsurance, uh, net and gross, and risk management. Thank you.